Well, hello everyone. My name is Rick Pasek, the Flatfish Fanatic, and welcome to my tying bench. Uh, today, continuation of, of Leech Month. Uh, I will be doing a uh, pattern that is uh, um, my take on uh, Rob Viella's uh, Ridgeback. Uh, Rob's out of uh, Calgary, Alberta. He came up with this fly, uh, a version of this fly, not this fly. This is, like I said, it's my version of it. Um, but his, he came up with probably if I remember correct, about two decades ago. It's been a phenomenal fly. Uh, and this is one that I've been tying similar to his for quite a few years. And uh, yeah, so that's, uh, this is my version of, uh, of Rob's uh, um, Ridgeback. So here we go. We're gonna start off with a, uh, a uh, Hens uh, BL724 in a size 10. We're gonna be using a red uh, glass bead. Um, this one, they, I think they call this one a ruby red and check, uh, yes, yeah, from the check seed bead. Um, for the tail, we'll be using um, mainly black marabou, but on the top, a little bit of, of uh, uh, wine marabou. Uh, for the flash, a little bit of Zemperfly uh, gala and red. And then for the hackle, just some black, uh, black hackle. And then for, I forgot to take this piece part out, for the uh, body, I'll be using a little bit of the uh, hen Spectra Dubbing in the black right there. <clears throat> okay. Oh, and some wire to counter wrap. And, and this is the part that uh, you can change up how you like. I like tying this with a red a holographic ridge back, but I ran out of my large. Um, I also tie it in this one as well, so that's why I'm tying it this this way today with the large pearl. Okay, so that'll be the ridge back por portion of it. So, all right, and some Semperfly Nano Silk in black for the thread. So there is a few parts to this one. This isn't uh, it's not a difficult fly to tie, but it is a little bit more advanced than than you know than a simple fly. So. Um, if for any of you beginners out there, this one will challenge you. It'll it'll take some it'll take some time because there is a few steps that got to be done, and you got to do it in a certain order, and you just you just got to be patient with it, right? So, so come back all the way to your bend, <clears throat> back to the front. Grab your your marabou. I really love this hen's marabou. It's this stuff is. Uh, some of the best marabou I've found. Um, so, okay, so I'm gonna strip off, I've already stripped off some of this side of the uh, the quill for another fly. So I want about two to three fingers width, usually about two width of material that I'm gonna take. So two fingers roughly. So roughly about there, and I'm gonna rip it off and fold it over. Rip it off and fold it over. Rip it off, fold it over until I get all of my my material. So it's not a ton because I'm going to add some red to this as well, right? So now I want this to be about a, about one hook length, roughly past one to one and a quarter hook lengths past the uh, back end. So I'm just going to tie that on all the way back to where my tie-in point, roughly where the barb would be. And, and like always, under and over, under and over, that'll help fouling. And then about that long, so I'm gonna grab it there and I'm just gonna pinch that off. Don't cut it, pinch it, okay? Now, take my wine marabou, wrap this back forward again, take one feather off of the wine here, and I'm going to do the same thing I just did. I'm going to take, see all this stuff at the back here? It's all kind of ugly and ratty. I'm going to get rid of that. You don't want that in your fly if you can help it. It just doesn't, makes it look clunky. So now you could just fold this down like that, but I don't like those tips. They're, they're not as flexible, so I like doing it this way. So again, about, about two fingertips, finger widths. Maybe a little bit less, but... It depends. It depends on what you want. If you want more red in it, then put then go a little bit more. If you want less red in it, then go a little less. It's up to you. I like having about half and half. Again, I'm just gonna tie that in. 
not worried about the length at this moment. Again, tie it right back and go under again. Make sure that's right on top. And then I will take my red and I'll, I'll, I'll clip it off if I need to, but actually, yeah, just a tiny bit. I actually don't mind the top one being a little bit longer. It gives a bit of a taper, so. Okay, back to the front piece of the red Gala blend. And I just like using one to two. I don't like having a ton of flash in these in the tails of these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just taking one strand and I'm doubling it over. And then I'll hook it on to my thread. So now it'll end up being four. But when I come back, I can split that down either side. Okay, and then the one, one piece obviously will have a loop, so I'll just cut that. And there you go. Just a little bit of, just going to move this a little bit so you guys can see a bit better. And I'm going to crank up my light if I can. No, there we go. So. All right, so that's that portion. Now, take a little bit of the Zemperfly uh, 0.2 mil wire and uh, this is gonna be my counter rib for my hackle. So that's gonna get tied right in there. This is where it starts getting a little bit more difficult for the beginners because there's, there's gonna be multiple things tied in here. So that the wire's tied um, out of the way. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of my ridge back, my flash. <clears throat> and it's got a natural bend in it from being on the uh, spool. Tie it with the, 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 uh, the curve going up. So, and make sure this point here, that this is tied in right, this is the most important part, that this is tied in right on the top of your fly. There's still a bunch of dubbing from the last fly I tied. <laughs> in the way, get rid of that. So you want that to stay right up on the top. Give it a twist if you have to. Okay, and then have that out of the way. Now come back forward, back again. And now I'm gonna wax my thread. My wax has got stuff on it. So now this is where I can decide which color I wanna go to. Sometimes I'll do a red body, sometimes I'll do a black body, sometimes I'll do a blend. So let's play around. Let's do a little bit of red. A little bit of black because this is this is probably the one I tie the most for my box is the red black blend and this is what it's a, the black of the hen spectra dubbing here's got some of that blue UV in it as well you can see all right so now I'm just going to take all that lay it on top of each other pull it apart stack it pull it apart stack it until it's mixed how I like it that again doesn't have to be perfect here guys um Nature's not perfect. I mean, this is not much in the way of nature looking. This is more of a lure style, piss the fish off style, get their attention, right? But, uh, so there's my blend. Okay, so now I'm just gonna dub a little bit on. I'll tighten that up in a second. Don't want a super loose dub here, but it doesn't need to be uber tight either. So, I'm not going to be really pulling this out. I'll be pulling out a little bit at the end. Um, it's not your typical dubbed leech where you pull everything out, right? So, now you can use a, uh, a chenille here if, if that's what you prefer. 
um, that's it's totally up to you. You can use a, a sparkle chenille or a flat chenille, or you can use a um, a uh, you can even use a uh, um, a Palmer chenille if you want to get right a little bit of a more of a hackly look. That's totally up to you. So that's going to be a little much, I think. So I'll just do that. And I'm leaving just a little bit of room at the front there for the hackle. So now I'm going to take a, a nice hackle here. This is this is really nice and long, right? But uh, I want to find one that's got a little bit of longer fibers right at the back end. This one's been picked through pretty good, so there's not a lot left. Now that one will do. Because I want some of those longer fibers up at the front here. So... But you got to be careful too, because you don't want the the wet fly webby style. You want it. You definitely want this to be a bit more stiff. So just uh, prep my uh, feather. I want the shiny side facing me. Tie that two three times in front, two three times behind, just to make sure that that stem is tied in nicely. Nip off your stem. So now this is plenty long. It's about seven inches long. So I'm gonna. I don't need a hackle plier. So I'm gonna do one. Oh, sorry. I made a mistake. Look at that. That's awesome. Hey, again, I've I've said this before in these videos many times. Every one of us makes mistakes. It's good to leave them in. So I got to take my ridge back and bring that up and over first. Right, so now there's my ridge back. Just give it a nice tight pull. Make sure that's sucked right in nicely. That's why it, these nano silks and stuff are really nice because you can really tighten up on that. And you cut that off. So now that's what you're ending up with. Is that right along the back? Okay, now you tie in your hackle. I know quite a few people have made comments about, you know, hey, I'm glad you leave your mistakes in and stuff. And I mean, I wouldn't have it any other way. I would, uh, I like leaving them in because I think it's it's good to show. So now I'm just going to open it up just like a woolly bugger. Open it up. And I want about four or five turns here, something like that. If I get four, it's good. If I get six, well, whatever. So there, and now I'm going to take the wire and I'm going to counter wrap the red wire and make sure I catch that piece in that I just let, there you go, and then you can let go and then just counter wrap forward. This makes this fly, I wouldn't call it indestructible, but it's pretty damn strong when you counter wrap with this wire. Right, the fish don't rip them apart as much. So now that the wire's done, I'm just going to helicopter it off. And I, I try to helicopter off my piece of hackle if it comes. If it doesn't, I'm going to cut it. You don't want to, yeah, it's not coming. It's good, good hackle, this one. So that's a number one Mets hackle from a few years ago, but. Just stroke all that back, get my whip finishing tool to one whip finish set, four, then I'm going to grab a little bit of Sally's, put some right on the thread, and then I got one more step after this and then she'll be done. So make sure she's... Uh, tight nice and nice and secure get that Sally's right in there four turn whip finish nice and tight cut off my thread and then if you want to you can now take your your uh, um, your velcro and just go in on the underneath portion 
and pull off. Don't do it on top of that ridge, uh, that ridge back, obviously, but you can pull out some of that uh, that dubbing. Not a lot. You just you know just to get a bit, that a little bit of extra sparkle. So and I'll just reset that in the vise, and there is your finished ridge back. Like I said, this is my version of Rob's ridge back. It's not even close to the same as his. Um, his works phenomenal at times. This one works phenomenal at times. It just all depends. But so yeah, so there is my version of it. So so there is the the back of it. You can see that ridge. And sometimes, like I said, I'll put a red one in there. Or I use red uh, hollow tinsel instead. And then just pulling out a little bit of that dubbing really just gives it a little bit extra bugginess look. Right. And when this gets wet, this will slick back really nice. And these hackles will pulsate really well. So, alrighty. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. If you did, give her a thumbs up. If you've subscribed, thank you. If you have not, please consider doing so. I uh, just did uh, on my last uh, video, did a giveaway for 1,500 subscribers. Once we reach uh, 2,000, we'll be doing another one. Um, and I'm preparing for a really big giveaway. I'm getting all kinds of stuff from Hens and Zemperfly and other material companies. And I'm going to be doing a nice big uh, giveaway. I uh, haven't decided yet when, but probably when I hit 2,500 members. And uh, we'll go from there. So, tie lines, everyone. 